hello everyone hope you all are doing good let's start our next question 51 a 40 year old patient was admitted to the gastroenterology with skin itching jaundice discomfort in the right subcostal area generalized weakness on examination skin is jaundice stressor of chest liver is 5 spleen 6 by 8 alkaline phosphate 2 general bilirubin 60 cholesterol 8 so uh, we have some options cholestatic cytolytic mesenchyma inflammatory asthenic and liver cell insufficiency so we can exclude one option here that is asthenic one which is a body type now yeah, this is not a syndrome the rest one is uh, related with liver and uh, we can uh, discuss this we have to discuss this okay so first one is cholestatic then we have cytolytic then we have liver cell insufficiency and the last one is mesenchymal inflammation okay so now let's discuss it one by one so in cholestatic what we will get will get increase conjugated bilirubin and uh, we need to know the parameters also but uh, we discuss it later increase ALP will get here increase cholesterol to and increase GCP GT, sorry, comma glutamate. In conjugated glutamine, the normal is 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 mg DL, or if we see in millimole, it's 5 to 17 or 20, you can say. Sorry, it's 5 to 20, it's a uh, total bilirubin, it's 1.7 to 5. ALP normal range is 0 0.5 to 1.3 millimole per hour liter and 40 to 125 international unit per liter. Cholesterol it's less than 5 millimole or less than 20 mg DL. In cytolytic we will get increased total AST, ALT, so the liver enzymes and then uh, total bilirubin also increase and uh, here the range is as we discussed before 0 0.3 to 1 mgdl if we see it in mgdl or 5 to 20 micromole okay. 5 to 17, 20 you can say Then in liver cell insufficiency, you have a decrease albumin, decrease prothrombin, decrease cholesterol, and a decrease fibrinogen. For mesenchymal inflammation, as it is inflammation, we will have the inflammatory marker increase ESR increase gamma globulin and increase crp c reactive protein okay so now we go back to our question and we see here alkaline phosphate is 2 so lp is increased here alp next one is bilirubin and then we have cholesterol we need to see which one is increased here so let's get back here ALP is 0 0.5 to 1.3 so 2 is increased so ALP increase bilirubin we saw total bilirubin it's 5 to 17 or 20 but in question you can see it's 60 so it is also increased highly 
then cholesterol it's less than 5 ml millimole and in question it's written 8 so it's to increase so ALP bilirubin cholesterol all three are increased here in liver cell insufficiency you can see albumin prothrombin all are decreased so it's not our answer mesenchyme inflammation all inflammatory marker ALP we can see in cholestatic in cellulitic we cannot see ALP so it is not our answer so cholestatic bilirubin increase ALP increase cholesterol increase so the, our answer is cholestatic the next one is a non-specific type of question not from therapy you have to remember it just so here chronic glomerular phase you can see and the treatment uh, sanatorium the answer is here creamia south coast of creamia you have to remember this okay nothing else <coughs> then 53 after a wasp bite there was a itching a horse voice barking cup anxiety physical examination there is edema of the lips eyelid and cyanosis so first we have to know what is the diagnosis here this condition is called after a wasp bite or bee sting uh, you have these symptoms edema eyelid sinusis okay wasp bite or bee sting the reaction here is called anaphylaxis and for anaphylaxis we have some specific treatment so first in what happened here here the immunity body immunity does this reaction so first one is steroids which will decrease the immunity and the symptoms too then we have antihistaminic drugs that will uh, decrease the mast cell and uh, it will uh, decrease the allergic symptom and uh, if we have shock then uh, we will use adrenaline so if shock present anaphylactic shock present we will use adrenaline so you can see here the options less six is a diuretics not our answer seduction is a diazepam so anti-epileptic euphiline is theophylline uh, and adrenaline we cannot use it because there is no shock here so left answer is prednisone steroids which is a first line drug for anaphylaxis then next question is a 16 year old atlocent was vaccinated with DTP in 8 days there was stiffness and pain joint uh, subfavorite temperature arctic area eruption enlargement of inguinal cervical nodes and spleen what kind of allergic reaction so we need to know about the hypersensitivity reaction here ok they are talking about the hypersensitivity reaction so what we need to learn hypersensitivity reaction so how many types are there as we know there are four types type 1 type 2 type 3 and type 4 let's divide it so you will understand it properly make this chart this is very important for any type of exam uh, the questions uh, are sure short in any exam uh, like crop 2 or fmg you can expect one question from here and if you remember this chart the questions will be easy so first one is type 1 which is called ige mediated hypersensitivity reaction which is a quick onset reaction and you can also say allergic reaction examples are as I said like uh, bee sting wasp bite then uh, latex use then drugs like penicillins type 2 it's cytotoxic sorry 
and uh, it is antibody mediated first one is ig mediated it's antibody mediated the examples are hemolytic reaction so like after transfusion then good pasteur syndrome what is good pasteur syndrome here antibody attacks the basement membrane of kidney and lungs then you have hyperacute graft rejection remember the term hyperacute okay so immediate graft rejections and antibody mediated as you know it is igg and igm mediated type 3 is immune complex mediated so immune complex we know it's antibody antigen complexes the examples here are uh, the autoimmune diseases like sle then uh, polyarthritis nodosa so all the diseases which are autoimmune okay in nature serum sickness vaccine where live vaccines are used these reactions are type 3 immune complex reaction where immune complexes come into organs okay the fourth one is delayed type or you can say cell mediated examples here are chronic graft rejection so you can see here chronic graft rejection is type 4 and uh, type 2 is hyper acute graft rejection so see the differences then uh, also latex use chronically if latex use allergic reaction occur is type 1 chronic latex use type 4 then uh, nickel or nickel type material uh, use poison iv and cell mediated it's t cell mediated okay so let's get back to our question we can see here that vaccinated with ddp and uh, we have all these reactions so it's a allergic reaction after 8 days of vaccinated so after 8 days our answer can be immediate type or type 1 so left with 3 so type 1 can be our answer left with 2 3 and 4 as we can see the vaccine live vaccine type okay this is type 3 hypersensitivity reaction remember this so it's immune complex mediated type 3 okay the next one is same 55 one same then 56 uh, 2 weeks after recovering from angina 29 year old patient noticed face edema weakness decrease work performance there were gradual progress of dyspnea edema of the lower extremities lumbar spine pale skin weakening of the heart sound ana sarka Uh, density protein 5 it's so side 20 30 hyaline cylinder 4 6 okay so protein urea we have hematuria we have hyaline cast so there is definitely problem with the kidney atrial pressure is also 160 by 100 so hypertension we have discussed these questions before also and mm, recovering from angina remember these things and also we have edema and hypertension okay these terms are important so mixed edema uh, this can be our uh, option because there is nothing to do with the ayurved then infectious allergic myocarditis there is no hint of infection here okay no toxic syndrome then we left with three option essential hypertension it's not essential hypertension because if we see uh, hypertension with uh, kidney problem we will get hypertensive emergency which is 180 above 180 110 so no essential hypertension then you have acute glomerulonephritis and acute polyneuropathies we have discussed these uh, two things if you uh, don't see the video before we ha- i have uh, uploaded a separate video on this you can see that okay so in acute uh, polyneuropathies and acute glomerulonephritis so here we don't have any toxic syndrome we have edema plus hypertension these two things doesn't fit with pyelonephritis and these two fit with acute glomerulonephritis okay so 
so our answer is acute glomerulonephritis so next one is uh, retrosternal pain several times a day while working for 100 to 150 the pain lasts for 10 minutes and can be relieved by nitroglycerin important so constricting retrosternal pain several times a day working for a fixed uh, distance relieved by nitroglycerin so it is a sure shot case of angina okay cg contents t web in v4 5 okay so these are other symptoms so we can uh, diagnose it by the first two lines okay and uh, they are asking about the classification so it is exertional angina as we say it is exertional angina and we have to classify them so we need to know the classification here there are four type we have discussed this before also so type 4 is resting one this is not our case type 1 is strenuous exercise or prolonged exercise or prolonged work this is not the case so left with 2 and 3 these two were more complicated one 2 is slight limitation and 3 is daily work limitations ok so these two are more confusing 2 and 3 so you can see here a several times a day working for 100 to 150 so our answer is not a 1 and 2 not our answer left with 2 and 3 so as you can see that we, the patient is having several times a day so he is having daily ok and then working for 100 to 150 meter so it's a daily limitation daily work limitation so what is our answer here you can see the pain several times a day so our daily work limitation type 3 ok then in autumn a 25 year old patient develops stomach uh, arising 1.5 to 2 hour after having meal 1.2 after having meal and night complaint of pyrosis constipation pain secreted after consuming spicy salty sour food it can be relieved by means of soda and hot water bag the patient has been suffering from the disease for a year ok epigastric pain on right and resistance of abdominal muscle ok so this type of question I have also discussed before so this is a case of what peptic ulcer disease pain after eating food or night okay so there are two types of first one is gastric second one is duodenal so chronic pancreatitis is not our answer because there is nothing to do with uh, pancreas enzymes or fat digestion problem Definitely hernia is uh, non specific here, nothing to do with this type of symptoms or night pain. Okay. Chronic cholecystitis is not also our answer because nothing after uh, no pain after like nothing no symptom about pain after eating fatty food or something else. So gastric is immediately after food, duodenal is two to four hour after food why we need to know the anatomy this is our stomach and then our duodenum ok so food comes rapidly through esophagus then stays in our stomach for up to 30 minute to 1.5 hour then after 1.5 hour it comes to the duodenum ok so 30 minute to 1.5 hour ok it depends on the food you are eating uh, like if uh, you are eating simple food it uh, takes up to 30 minutes to 1.5 hour if you are eating meat then it takes up to 4 hour so 1.5 to 2 hour it's duodenal ulcer ok on and at night also this is a characteristic then uh, a woman complains of dull pain in the right subcostal area epigastric area now see appetite declining then a history of gastric peptic ulcer uh, right subcostal area epigastric pain okay and then gastric peptic ulcer on examination weight loss then ap normal diffuse tenderness resistance of the muscle palpation there is heart lymphatic node 1.1 in size over the left clavicle important hint so we know it a case of gastric peptic ulcer and what is the complication of gastric peptic ulcer okay 
we see here weight loss now here so gastric peptic ulcer the complications can be first one is perforation okay or bleeding perforation bleeding okay. so here we can, we would see uh, like hematemesis blood vomiting and the specific uh, term here used is coffee ground vomiting you will get this question coffee ground vomiting remember the term in perforation and bleeding so nothing mentioned here of hematemesis here also bp will drop but bp is normal in our question so not perforation here the second one is long term effect uh, gastric peptic ulcer or gastritis can may convert to gastric carcinoma okay so in cancer we'll have non specific like weight loss nausea and then hard lymphatic node it is a cancer here okay so the node uh, if it is in clavicle so it is metastasis already metastasis occur so we'll do biopsy here okay no other option we need to see so phago gastroendoscopy with biopsy stomach x ray uh, for perforation in page metri h pylori uric acid for h pylori in stomach x ray what we will see in perforation we will see gas under the diaphragm ultrasound of examination also nothing used here okay then on the 20th june 20th june it comes men brought to the clinic the disease broke out acutely temperature is 38 to 39 also weakness acute headache nausea vomiting pain over the body sleep disorder on physical examination hyperemia of skin face neck thorax meningeal symptoms are positive 12 days ago the patient returned from siberia from the forest temperature here is raised acutely broke okay so there is a toxic syndrome here as we can see and we have meningeal skin positive so definitely a infection here and a history of forest so epidemic typhus pseudo tuberculosis they they don't give this type of uh, things and epidemic typhus uh, they it in meningeal sign will only be positive here in influenza we can have meningeal sign positive but uh, not this type of uh, hyperemia of skin face thorax and the time is also june so nothing so it can be hemorrhagic fever or encephalitis but in hemorrhagic fever it only be meningeal sign positive so it is tick borne encephalitis so you just see acute toxic syndrome with meningeal symptoms positive plus forest visit go for tick borne encephalitis because in exam you won't have this much time to think this so these three see your shot go for tick borne encephalitis or tick encephalitis okay so i think uh, for this enough thank you see you in the next video bye bye